To run DeepSeek locally, I'll open up my browser and look for Olam. It basically lets you run LLMs on your computer. I'll click download, yoink, and while it's downloading, I'll go into models and here's DeepSeek R1. I'll click on it here and I can choose which version of the LLM I want to download. The bigger ones are better, but harder to run for your computer. I'll pick the 7 billion one and here's the command that I will need to install it. I'll then go into my downloads location and open the Olama installer. Boink, then install to install it. And once it's done, I can send the installer right to the trash. You'll notice that now Olama is running in my system tray. Next, I'll open up the start menu and look for this scary thing called PowerShell. Don't worry, we'll do everything step by step. So this is where I want to copy and paste in that command from the Olama website and click enter. It's now downloading DeepSeek. AI! It will take 64 years, and once it's done, boom, it says send a message. I can now talk to DeepSeek AI locally on my computer. Once I click enter, it starts to think. This is one of the cool features of DeepSeek. And after a while, it spits out the answer. Very nice, but what the hell is this? I want a clean, nice interface, like ChatGPT, instead of this black box. Couple things first. I can type slash question mark to see the available commands, and to stop talking to DeepSeek, I can type slash buy. See you later. Then if I want to activate it again, I can use the same command from Olama. But you'll also notice that it's quite slow. If I go into the DeepSeek website and ask the same question, it's much faster. That's because my computer, bad, China's data center, good. But it's also good at harvesting, just like every other AI. AI! So to have a fancy interface, I'll open up my browser and look for Docker. It's what's going to let me run the nice interface. I'll click download and choose my operating system. Then inside my downloads location, I'll open the installer, say yes, and hear OK. And after it's done, I'll close and restart my PC. Hello. I'll then click accept and finish. Then Docker will open up, where I'll be able to create an account. Once I'm done, I'll click here, then skip the survey, and after a while, I'm in. I can now see that Docker and Olama are both running. Next, inside of my browser, I look for how to start open web UI container. Those are some words, I know. Inside of the first link, I'll be able to find this command. If your PC has an NVIDIA GPU, then you can use the command that's below this one, so your AI runs faster. AI. I'll copy this command and once again open PowerShell and paste it in. It's going to do its magic and once it's done, I'll click allow. There's one more thing to check, so I'll search for Windows features and click here. And I'm looking for virtual machine platform. I want to make sure it's enabled. Beautiful. So now I'll open Docker and here you'll see a new thing that's spawned in. I'll click on these numbers and boom, stuff is happening. I'll click get started and create an account. I'll need it to log in into my new AI interface. Once I'm done, I'll say let's go here and boom I have the DeepSeek R1 model loaded offline and I can chat with it. I'll remove the internet cable from my PC just to show it's working offline and once I type in a prompt it's going to take its sweet time to think and eventually spit out an answer. If I don't want to use it anymore I can go back to Docker and click this to stop it. Now you may be thinking I have all of this AI stuff installed how do I get rid of it? I'll go to my start menu and look for control panel then inside of programs and features I'll select Docker and an install and it's going to remove itself from my PC. The exact same thing with Olama. But DeepSeek is still taking up space on my PC. To eliminate it as well, I'll open up File Explorer, go into C Drive, Users, then my username, and here I'll delete .docker and .olama folders. But Whoa, what's down there, you may ask? A little penguin has spawned in as well. To make it fly away, I'll go into the start menu, look for turn Windows features on or off again, and inside I'm looking for Windows subsystem for Linux. Once I turn it off, it will ask me to restart my PC, and the sneaky Windows update later, I'm back. And there's no more penguin in my file explorer. Beautiful.